we started in class last Thursday. When yeah. is that due? That is due this Thursday, I believe. Okay. I mean, it's probably, it should say on Angel. Well, it's probably on the syllabus. Yeah. Um, I, I got Alan's email. I saw the picture that he sent with the additional stuff and everything. And he started um, laying stuff out. I've got a layout drawn out. I started, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out what my layout was going to look like uh, from XML and just kind of basic stuff. And then started looking at the classes I'm going to design and. You know, I just have some questions and ideas that I want to share with you with Okay. I wasn't ready to commit to designing that for myself. So. Okay. Well, you know, you, you know I'm flexible. So if, if there's something that you're going to bring to the group's attention, you want to talk through it Thursday, and so you'll turn in Friday, that's okay. okay. That's, that's not an issue. Uh, I'm, I'm more interested in, in doing a, a good job on it than adhering to any sort of schedule. Right. You're right. There's nothing on there that says... It's when it's due. I already submitted mine, so I might have to submit another version. Um, let's go and look at this. I think if you look on the syllabus, I always get the word syllabus and resume confused. I don't know why. It, it's it's because they're I mean they're clearly different things. But there is, by the way, an internship fair coming up on Thursday. I think it is, and you might want to participate in that. Yeah, it says homework due, and I say Monday of week. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah, I think I think that date. Consider it to be due the Thursday of the week, not the Monday of the week. By Monday here, I mean Thursday. Yeah, might have been. I don't know. Yeah, um, but at any rate, yeah. So so that's where we are. I am. I'm working on this myself. I'm, I'm actually having fun doing it. I was in a meeting yesterday, and that's what I did most of the meeting is work on this. I, I worked on it most of the time, and I, argue, I, I, I was alert enough to argue every now and then, but um, as, as I typically do, uh, but then I was working on it. So I'm having a good time doing it. I do have a question. If, you get, if the player gets 21 on the first two cards, they win, right? That's blackjack. Okay. Yeah, I have to implement that. Has to be on the first two cards. Understood. Right. That would not be the first two cards then. Right. Okay. All right. So I do have to I do have to implement that functionality. So I guess the question is for you folks is I mean I know what I am planning on covering, but I do want to know if you have any questions for me to address before I start the stuff that I want to cover. <coughs> Any questions? Right. Yeah, the first assignment, the lab six for this, is to create essentially a class diagram, although I didn't say the words class diagram, so a listing of what classes you're going to have, what methods you're going to have, and so on. Um, no, if you're more comfortable doing that, that's fine, no. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. All right. So the lab that's due this Thursday, which you can do, turn in late if you want, is really the design where you sketch out what classes you're going to have, maybe what the layout's going to look like, and so on. The second part of this, and we'll see how far we need to go with it, but the second part of it is to implement this functionality. And I'm going to bring up, I have a, a screenshot. And it doesn't have to look exactly like this. All right, and what this shows is this shows the three cards that the player has gotten. So diamonds, four diamonds, ten of hearts, 
seven of hearts, and it shows there the total of 21. All right? There's three buttons, hit, stay, and reset. A hit should give the person another card. All right? Stay should, right now, do nothing. All right? Because we're, we, we're, not, we're not necessarily building the dealer logic yet in this one. And reset should clear everything out and start fresh. All right? So, in other words, when this opens, all right, it should run, show two cards for the player. They should be able to hit, hit the hit button and get additional cards. You don't have to worry about busting. You could go over and deal out all the cards if you wanted to, all 52, and see what the total is. All right, you don't have to worry about anything. What I want is a display of the cards, a display of the value, and those three buttons. And the middle button doesn't have to do anything. The hit should give a hit, give a, a new card, and the reset should clear everything out. All right. That is due, not this Thursday, but a week from Thursday. Um, question. Yeah. And this might be more directed to Alan since he's actually playing blackjack at the casino. Does it mean anything? Mem to my memory, it means nothing. Me nothing. So, would a more simplified way of doing this be to not even have the suit on here at this time? Or is, this, is that syntactic sugar that you like? What you turn in should look like this. <laughs> um, if you absolutely, um, I don't see, I don't, I, you know, that is like eh, this much further to code. You know what I mean? So if it really, if it really would be difficult for you to implement the suits, then yeah, for the first round, avoid the suits. But I don't really see why it wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Yeah, it is true that in the UI portion where we're actually showing like images of cards, it's pretty to show the suits on there, but they don't mean anything. So that's why I'm wondering if it means anything in this context. But it'll help, but it'll yeah. help you because when you start grabbing the photos, when you start putting the images yeah. on the game, right. you're going to need that string yeah. to pull your, your image out of the asset file. Anyway, so you might as well get practice manipulating that string. Yeah, I mean, to me, when I hear a deck of cards, I think, you know, there's a, there's a card value or card name or whatever you want to call it, and then there's a suit associated with it. So, yeah, right now we're not doing much with it other than displaying it. And, in fact, later on we're not going to do much of it except display it. We're just going to display it fancier. All right, we're going to display an image instead of... Instead of putting diamonds out onto a label, we're going to take that and pull the... the pull a diamond image. Pull a diamond yep. image. Yeah. Get that. And I'm fine with that. You know, yeah. You know, I come from a uh, from a methodology of you know do the simplest thing possible. You know, and this is pretty simple. In in the methodology that I've learned, you actually you don't even worry about suits at this point. But that's just, I'm just throwing that out there. Again, if it you know if if it if it, if it if it violates your deeply held principles and you want to turn in the first version without suits, then I guess I'm okay with it. The problem is though, here's here's the problem that I would have with that. How do you know your dealing is right if you're not showing suits? I have king and king. What if there's what if there are two king of hearts? How do I know that? How do I make sure that I don't send four kings out, or, or not four kings, but five kings out in, in the dealing? I want a deck of cards, and I want to make sure that that deck of cards is dealing properly. All right? So that's one of the reasons I showed the suit, even though it doesn't really do anything, because if I saw the ten of hearts twice, I know I got a bug. All right? And my suggestion would be to play through this a bunch of times. Play through this a bunch of times and make sure it's giving you the right value. For, uh, for, for that. This actually, this is a step, but this is a substantial step in getting it right. All right. If you do this well and do this correctly, you have, you know, you're doing a pretty decent job uh, of this. 
Let's talk about some of the classes. And let, let, me, let me share what, what, what my plan was to do, and I'll do it if there's no further question, is to share my thoughts on some of the classes. All right? And here's where, again, you know, keep in mind that what you're really doing when you're doing object-oriented design and programming is you're effectively modeling something in the real world. All right? You're creating a model for it. And a model... You know, what is a model? A model is a representation of something. And a model is a representation of the stuff that's relevant for whatever you're building the purpose for. Whatever you're building this for, whatever your purpose is. So, you know, a model car. A model car means different things to different people, right? A model car for a kid, you want it to look right. You know, you want it to be a nice color and make a noise and things like that. A model car for an engineer that's doing wind tunnel testing might have different requirements, and so on. So therefore, for a model, you have to consider the problem domain and what you're doing and what's relevant to the problem domain. I will say, sometimes it helps to take your hat off and think in real-world terms when you're doing this. So, for example... Let's consider two classes that we agreed on last time would be in the solution. The two classes I want to look at are... the deck and a card. Okay? Deck and a card. All right. Let's look about at these in more detail, these classes in more detail. Remember, when we identify a class, we want to identify what properties exist for that class, what attributes exist for that class, but we also want to talk about the methods of the class. We also want to talk about the constructors that we're going to use. Alright? What does a card... What are methods or attributes of a card class? Suit? And what else? Number or value or whatever it's called. I think I call that name or value, or whatever. Those are two attributes associated with that. All right? As was noted, you know, you, uh, in Java, you have to implement get and set methods for these yourself. So, get and set for each of these. A get will return the value, a set will give the value for that. What are we going to store these as? What are we going to store the suit as? What are we going to store the um, number as, or the value? Pardon me? You could do this a bunch of different ways, right? Okay, you could do with an enumeration. You could make this a string. You could make this an integer. You could do this several different ways, all right? But we can agree on, and again, I'll leave that up to what you want to do with this. You could make it so that zero equals hearts, and one equals diamonds, and three, two equals spades, and three equals clubs. You could do something like that. You could make it so that 0 equals a 2, 1 equals a 3, and so on, up the list. All right? It might drive you crazy. You can do it however you want. All right? But we do agree that this is going to have, at the very least, two attributes. All right? A suit and a card name or value. Now, you could, 
Well, we'll leave it at that. It'll have that. And there should be gets and sets for this. What kind of constructor would you have for the card class? What is a constructor, by the way? Okay, a constructor is the mechanism by which objects are created. And every class has a constructor. If you don't make a constructor, the compiler generates a constructor for you that simply allocates the memory for it. If you choose to define your own constructor, you can define your own constructor to set certain properties in the class initially. So for example, if I was creating a player class for Blackjack, all right, I might initialize the number of chips they have as $100 worth. So I create a new player, automatically the assumption is they get 100 chips to start playing. So I could do that in the constructor. So as soon as I create that, that property of the number of chips a person has gets set to 100. All right. So that so you can you can you can write your own constructor if you want to initialize some properties when you create the object. Now, in the case of a card, if you think of a card, does it make sense to talk about a card that doesn't have a name? or doesn't have a value? A blank card. Is there such a thing as a blank card? No. So what does that imply about the constructor that I might want to create here? What kind of constructor might I want to create on the card? Uh, one, that sets the suit. one that sets both the suit and the name. Right? Because it doesn't make sense to talk about a card that doesn't have both of those. Okay, so therefore, it seems reasonable to me, and again, you can do this however you want, and remember this is potentially an incremental process, so you don't have to hit a home run, you can do it one way and modify it later on, but it would make sense to me that a constructor has, for this, has two arguments. One for the suit, and one for the, the name of the card. And again, why do I say that? Why would I create my own constructor? Because it simply doesn't make sense to talk about a card, to create a card that doesn't have any of those attributes. Yes? There's no wild cards in Blackjack. Well, in a different game, it's still a two, right? If you're playing poker and deuces are wild, you still, lay, you still lay down on, uh, you know, you still get dealt a two of diamonds, right? It's not like you get dealt a card that has a W on it. You still get, you just need in your rules a way to process that. It's still a two of diamonds, it's just how you're going to evaluate that. Again, that's still not, that's not a characteristic of the card. That's characteristic of the game rules that you're playing, right? Just like an ace has a value of 1 or 11. That isn't intrinsic in the ace. That is the role an ace plays in the game of blackjack. So a wild card, again, would be the role that a 2 or whatever would play within um, a, a game of poker or whatever. It's still a two, though. It's still a two of hearts. Okay. So again, that's my rationale for saying this has to be a constructor. All right. What does a constructor look like? Are we all familiar with that? Constructor in Java. Okay. You can have, you know, this will be something, if you're not familiar with it or have questions, you can ask them now, you can ask them um, when, you know, w during, during the work time. 
Oh, not you? OK. I would, a constructor would look something like this. All right. Here's a tip off of how I'm doing my card class. All right. My constructor, public card, let me go, let me go and copy this into a text editor so I can make it bigger. This is a constructor. Notice that it doesn't have a return value. Notice that the name of the constructor is the same as the name of the class. So that's how you can tell just by looking at this that this is a constructor. Right? Every other method you have has a return value and it doesn't match the name of the class. It's something else. All right. So, in this case, I have two arguments. Constructor is like a method, but it's not really a method. All right? I have two arguments. Int arg suit, int arg name. And I simply set those two attributes when I create it. So, when I would, when I would call this, I would have to say, if I'm creating a new card object, I would have to say card C equals new card and specify the two parameters. In my case, for example, since I'm storing an integer for the suit and an integer for the name. If I said this, card C equals new card zero zero, I'd be creating the two of hearts. I, 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 I'm not I'm not sure I understand what you're referring to. I'm making myself a Pardon me? I'm making myself a because I knew what I was trying to say, but maybe I didn't say it right I, th I, I never said what you guys said about a constructor was wrong. All right? I was just maybe filling in the gaps in the definition and the description. So, yeah, I mean, what you said, if what you're talking about is what you said about a constructor, yeah, that's true. You can set the properties. But that's not the only thing you do in a constructor. All right? And in, as was, was mentioned, the no argument constructor, you're not really setting any properties, although you could. You could override and write your own to initialize some default properties. But that's what a constructor looks like in Java, and that's how you have to use it. Now, remember, the one thing, and again, to review the basic Java concept, all right, if I create a constructor, if I create any constructor, I lose that default compiler-generated constructor. So, in other words, I cannot say this. I'll get a compiler error if I say that. Why do I get a compiler error when I say that? Because I've defined a constructor. If I did not define a constructor, I could get away with doing that. Because if you don't define any constructors, a constructor is generated for you with no arguments. That doesn't do anything, but it just allocates the memory. As soon as you define a constructor, the Java compiler says, look, hey, this guy knows what they're doing, so I'm not going to monkey around and create a constructor for them. 
So you no longer, once you've defined a constructor, you can no longer rely on that default constructor. Now, not to muddy the water further, but if you wanted to create your own no argument constructor, you're welcome to do that. But the generated one won't be there for you. And that makes sense if you think about it. I've said it's the nature of a card to have a value in a suit. No card exists without a value in a suit. So therefore the only way I can construct a card object is if I supply the name and the suit. I can't create one that doesn't have any values for name or suit. All right, I can't. So therefore, um, I'm not even going to have a no argument constructor. I'm only going to have the one constructor and you have to call it to create one of these. Questions about this? All I did here, by the way, and again, I am like every other developer in terms of I may refine this over time. But what I did right now is I'm storing the suit and the name of the card as an integer. And then I have an array that gives a more descriptive value of it. So a zero for suit is hearts. So in fact, when I ask to return the suit, I return the name of the suit. All right? And I return the name of the card. So ace, king, queen, jack, whatever. All right. So that's pretty much it for the card class. Does a card class have any other methods? Well, not right now. Not that I can think of, anyhow. On to the deck class. Does anyone have a deck of cards with them? I should have brought one in. Yeah, everyone looks at you because we know that like you're going to be like, you know, you're down in the CC playing people at Starbucks, you know, for, for coffee and... Is this like, uh, what is it, Doctor Who's uh, TARDIS. TARDIS? Yeah, that, you know. Bigger on the inside. Exactly. I say that about all women's purses and bags. They're portals to the fifth dimension. It doesn't matter if they're bigger or small. Okay, let's pretend this is a deck of cards. Let's pretend this is a deck of cards, all right? So, what is a deck of cards? It's a collection of cards, right? What do they do with cards? They shuffle them. And they deal them. Which card gets dealt? The top one. Unless you're a shady dealer. Unless you're a shady dealer, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the top card. When I deal that card, guess what? It's no longer on the deck, right? So I can't deal it again. All right, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what, what I'm using. Essentially, yeah. All right. So I'm dealing a card. It's no longer on the deck. So I start out, I have 52 cards. I deal the first card. It's not there. I deal the second card. No longer on there. I'm down to 50 cards. 49, 48. All right. Let's say that people, both people stay, you know, and okay, you look and it's evaluated and there's the winner. Now, for the first pass, we're going to go and we're going to gather up all those cards, shuffle them up again, and deal it a second time. But that's not how blackjack actually works, right? That's not how blackjack actually works. What happens if I go and deal this card, for, uh, 51 cards, 50 cards, 49 cards, 48 cards. Okay, let's say again, they both stay. Someone wins and loses. What happens to these cards? They go to a discard pile. All right? And then we play another bunch of hands. <coughs> Finally, when we're done... Oh, I'm out of cards. What do I do? Pick up the discard. 
shuffle it, and continue to deal. Pardon me? Well, you get the 30%. Okay, fair enough. All right, so when you get the 30% of it, you go and you pick up the discard, join the rest, join it with the rest of the deck, and do that. So, for phase one, don't worry about the discard. All right, don't worry about the discard pile. Every game start with a fresh deck. However, you do need to worry about not dealing the same card twice. All right, so... So, with that in mind, with our envisioning that, let's think about what the deck is going to have. It's going to have, and again, you can do this probably a few different ways, it's going to have an array list of cards. We all know what an array is, correct? What's the difference between an array and an array list? An array list can hold objects. An array can too. But an array list, can, uh, an array list has to hold objects. Okay? Has to hold objects. It can't hold primitives. What else about an array list? Well, it's a bit an array is fixed. All right? An array is fixed where an array list is not fixed. So if I declare an array, I have to declare it at a certain size. If I declare an array list, I don't declare, I can, I can, it can go up and down. Which, if you think about it, makes sense here, right? Because this array list is my deck gets less cards as I deal. So my list of cards in the deck decreases every time I deal a card out. All right? Okay. So what are we going to have? What methods are we going to have with a deck of cards? All right. Shuffle method. All right. Deal. We're going to have a constructor. Well, methods can't be static, right? The methods can't be static for the deck. Because a static method is something that is true for all decks, right? There's no instance variables, all right? And in this case, there's definitely going to be instance variables. I'm keeping track of what cards I have in this deck, all right? So deck, you know... If I had a game where there were multiple decks involved, deck A could have one number of cards in a certain order, deck B could have a different. So it's not a static thing. It is, it is going to be, these are going to be instance methods. Pass your array list in what method? Where does that array list live? Okay, so in other words, the deck of cards doesn't have a collection of cards in it. Yeah, that, and that way doesn't make sense to me because that's not real world. Right? A deck of cards is a deck of cards. I'm offering alternatives. Okay, and that's fine. But I'm saying why I prefer my alternative as opposed to just saying, now nah, we ain't doing that. All right? And you're welcome to do it. Write it uh, another way. In my case, my thought is that a deck of cards is a, a list of cards, an array list of cards. Where are we going to create the cards? Within the deck. And where within the deck are we going to create it? Of course, a class has knowledge of itself. It has knowledge of its methods itself. 
that doesn't have the knowledge of how to create that that deck of cards like that. If it's if it's, a, if it's just maintaining a collection of cards, somebody else should have to have that in. Yeah, I I totally disagree with that. A, a, de a deck of cards knows what's in a deck of cards. It knows it has cards, and it knows how to create a deck of cards. All right. I, I, I don't I don't see that as a violation of of any sort of OO principle. Again, your mileage may vary. If you want to code it differently, you're welcome to. So I'm going to do it in a constructor. I'm going to make a constructor on the deck. And what is that constructor going to do? That constructor is going to instantiate a card object and it's going to run through a loop. And it's going to instantiate actually 52 card objects. All right. Now let's remember back to what I said a card had. In my definition of card, I said that there's two integers a suit and a name. Suit has a value of 0 to 3, name has a value of 0 to 12. All right. So, my constructor on the deck is going to do what? It's going to have a nested loop. And each iteration through the loop is going to create a card by calling the constructor of the card and then it's going to add it to the array lists. Whoops. So, after I create the card, after I create the, uh, I'm sorry, after I create the card, I add it to the array list. So the constructor effectively fills out that array list. The no argument constructor fills out that array list. Which page? Yeah. Yeah. That's on the card class. The card class has those two instance variables, suit and name. And the card object or the card class also has a constructor that accepts a suit and a name. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the appropriate number of times Each time we're making a card and we add that card to the array list. So, when we're done, our array list has 52 cards. And guess what? They're just like a brand new deck of cards, right? They're in suit order. The two of hearts is the first card, the three of hearts is the second card, and so on down the line. So we're going to have to shuffle it. Fortunately for us, there's already a shuffle method that works with that. So we can call, invoke the shuffle method on an array list to go and shuffle that array list. So it will put it in some sort of random order. Exactly. Exactly. So, we create our 52 card deck of cards. We shuffle it to put them in some random order. So let's assume we did that. When we are done, 
and I go to deal. We mentioned there's going to be a deal method. Alright? What happens with a deal method? We take the top card off the deck. What's, what do you suppose would be a nice subscript for that top, top card? The top card on the deck. Index of zero. Right? We pull off the array list, the card that has an index of zero, give it to the first person. So, what's this method going to look like to deal? What's this method going to return? It's going to return a card. What arguments is it going to have? Nothing. You just deal. So, what is this dealing going to do? It's going to grab top card off of deck. It's going to remove that card from the deck. And finally, it's going to return that card. Let's look at Java array lists. Okay. These are probably all the methods that we need. Let me, let me make this bigger. Let's look at some of the methods that are going to be useful. Get. Get returns the object at a specified position in the array list. Now, what did we say that position is? Zero. Is it ever anything but zero? Assuming that the dealer is an honest person. No. It's always zero. So our deal method is going to always return, the z is always going to do a get to get the top card off of that list. So, we'll do this a piece at a time. Let's say the deck has one of its attributes is an array list of cards of card and let's call it cards. So the cards is the name of the array list. Our deal method is going to return a card And it's going to say, you know, you could do this a couple different ways. Card next equals what? Equals my array list get zero. So what that does is that grabs the top card of the list and stores it in a variable named next. So now I have that next card in the dealer's hand. Getting ready to hand it to someone, but I've got to take it out of the deck first. How do I get rid of it out of the deck? I use the remove method. So, 
I could then say card, cards rather, remove what index? Zero. So what I'm doing is I grab that, I, I'm, I put my hand on the first card, so I have it in my fingertips. I pull it out of the deck, all right? So I remove it from the deck, and then I give it to whoever asked for it. So then I return next. So if we were going to ask, you're going to ask the deck of cards at this point how many cards it has. It has one card less than the card, th than the number of cards it had prior to the deal. So if it had 52 initially, after it deals one card, it has 51. After it deals a second card, it has 50, and so on going down the line. All right. So, how do we worry about, how do we handle, how do I want to put this? <laughs> how do we accommodate the fact that I don't want to duplicate cards? In other words, there should only be one ace of spades. How do I guarantee that there aren't two ace of spades that get dealt out? My collection is created with one of every card, and then as I deal the card, I take it off the deck. So therefore, I should not run into the difficulty of having the same card dealt twice. Okay? So that then goes into someone's hand. Alright? The next thing comes along, deals the second one, third one, fourth one, and you're ready to go. Questions about either the array uh, list, the cards, or the deck? The way I have it right now, yeah, each time I'm creating a new deck. Each one I hit reset, I'm going in and I'm, I'm just constructing a new deck. Now, this again is based on the assumption that each time you start with a fresh deck. If we were going to extend it so that we use the deck and the discard pile, we'd simply have a second array list of cards it would be the discard pile. After we finish the game, all the cards in both players' hands would be put in the discard uh, file or, or uh, uh, pile, which corresponds to this array list. As we we're dealing, if we got to lower than 70% of the number of cards in the, in the deck, we would then go and refresh the deck by adding everything back in from the discard pile, reshuffling, and then going from there. But first things first. That's not something that's a requirement um, for the first pass. All right. Any questions on this part? Now, what is a hand? What I'm trying to build towards is, is just the basic functionality that I showed in the screenshot. I got inspired and I actually went beyond that um, today, but... Um, Let's talk about the basic functionality in the screenshot. What else do you need? 
you need at least two other things to do the basic functionality that is shown in this screenshot. Two other things besides the user interface, of course. Right. You need, well, again, besides the user interface. User interface and, and, and all that. Okay. I need the rules, right? I need the rules class. All right. And I need a hand class. What is a hand? A hand is like a deck. It's a list of cards. All right. Specifically, it's an array list of cards. Right? Why an array list? Because we don't know how many cards a person is going to have. Right? They could have two, three, four, and so on up the line. So my hand is going to also be going to have an array list of cards. And I don't know, I'll call it cards as well. It'll have a method to accept the new card that will take the card and it will add it to the collection. All right. Our rules. But what we have right now, our rules need definitely one method, and that is to give the value for a hand. So, public method, what's it going to return? An int, right? A value. And we can call it evaluate hand. And it's going to accept as an argument a hand. This actually could be a static method because we give it the hand and uh, it actually could be, could, yeah, it could be a static method because the rules for evaluating it are not different in different blackjack games. There's a rule for evaluating that and every blackjack game, the same rule applies. So, what is this going to do? This is going to loop through my, through my cards, all right, in the hand. Maybe I have a get card method, get next card or something like that, where I specify an index. Maybe I have a get number of cards. Maybe I have a get cards method that returns an array list. But somehow this, func this function has to look at each card individually and evaluate it. And again, we're going to evaluate it based on the rule of a 2 through 10 are worth their number. All right? A jack, king, and queen are worth 10. And an ace is worth either 1 or 11. Now, my suggestion is 
if you're concerned about the whole ace thing and how to evaluate that rule, then just count it as 11 the first time through. You know, just don't worry about the, don't let that hang you up, I guess is what I'm saying. Again, the notion here is to, to make progress and to get pieces of it done without worrying about getting everything done all at once. So, if your rules aren't completely accurate because they don't take into account the fact that an ace can't have a value of 1, then okay, just remember that so you can go back and fix it. But you don't have to address that right now. You can still make progress on this and still get to a certain point without letting you that hang you up. Alright? So, you're probably going to have and again, it, a lot of this depends on how you store things, but you could have um, essentially a set of if statements that looks at the value or the name of the card and increments for each card that's on the list. How do you suppose you are going to handle aces? What are you going to do? Yeah, that would that you could use a switch with cases to determine the value of it. But how do you handle the fact that an ace could be one or eleven? Okay. I'm writing my own notes here. What I was going to do is I'm going to pass a hand in my reference, and I'm going to look. I'm going to first find out if I have any aces. I'm going to pull those aside. I'm going to loop through and get a total, and then make my decision on my aces. That way, I can manipulate the list of of, of cards because I'm getting it by reference without actually mangling the actual value of those cards that's being passed through it. Okay. Any other thoughts on doing this? I'll tell you how I did it. All right, which doesn't make it the right way, but it is a way to do it. And I always go for simple. All right. My assumption is that with an ace, generally speaking, until you're busted, it's better to count it as 11. When you become busted, then you start making it 1. Yeah. So, what do I do? I loop through and I get the value of my cards and I assume all my aces have a value of 11. Alright? So I loop through my collection of cards. I come up with a value. I then look to see if the value is greater than 21. Alright? As I was looping through, the thing I forgot to mention is, I'm going to increment a counter of how many aces I have. Alright? So, I may have one, two, three, or four aces, potentially. Alright? So I'm going to increment the counter of the number of aces. When I'm done, if, my, if I've busted, if I've gone over 21, I'm going to look to see if I have any aces, and I'm then going to subtract 10 for every ace I have until I either run out of aces or I'm lower than 21. Alright? So I essentially have a loop that loops through as many times as I have aces and I look to say, hey, am I lower than 21 yet? No. Take off for another ace. Am I lower than 21 yet? No. Take off for another ace. Am I lower than 21? Take off for another ace. If I reach the end of my aces and I'm still over 21, then I'm busted. If, however, I had, for example, a, um, a, a king and two aces, I would first calculate that as 22. 
right? King and two, no, that would be, king and two aces would be 32, right? Yeah. I would then loop through and say, okay, I'm going to count the first ace as a 10. That brings me down to 22. Oh, I'm still over 21. I'm going to go and loop through again, and that will bring me down to 12, and then I'll be okay. Is just going to do that. In calculating, in calculating doing that, there's, after I loop through and tally up all the cards, I do the check for aces. And then I use that rule to say, if I'm over 21, if I'm, if I'm under 21, then I just keep it at that. So if I had an ace and a five, for example, I would just say I'm at 16. I wouldn't bother worrying about it. It only becomes an issue when you bust. So if I had uh, an ace and uh, a five, and I got a ten, all right, that would give me twenty-six. Oop, oh, I'm back down to sixteen. If I'm not mistaken, those are the things that you need to do phase one of this. I want your des the design to include other stuff too. You know, I want your design to be as comprehensive as you can make it. Keeping in mind that it's a design, it's a plan. It doesn't mean that you can never go and change it or whatever. But it's your plan as of now. Alright? Yes? Okay. Okay. Uh, typically, um, uh, like uh, methods and um, what uh, what they'll get passed and what the arguments and return values, it would is typically enough. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean. You don't have to write code. No, you don't have to write code. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, you know, I, I want to go beyond just, you know, well, okay, we, we, we decided some classes. We talked about some methods last time. We talked about some methods today. I want to go a little bit further to say, okay, how is that going to work in that? I'm trying to balance here, and it's not always easy, you know, giving away the answer versus um, sending you out on your own, you know, without any, any preparation at all. So I'm trying to give a little bit of coaching before you go and do that. I, I you know, I, I guess that's, that's my strategy and, and we'll try to be as successful. Again, keep in mind that you can do this different than I've specified. I'm giving you what seems to be reasonable for me. And again, you know, you can have some variations of this without being, you know, off track. All right. Um, that's all I had for today. Thursday will be a work day, which means that you can work on this individually with me, with other people. All right. Questions? Going once, twice, sold. All right. A bar? What, 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 a bar as in what? Well, it's C-sharp. You don't have to, you don't have to say string x equals dollars. You can do bar x equals dollars. And it doesn't implicit. Don't believe so. Okay. Thanks. What was the answer? Uh, not that I know of. It just, it just makes uh, new running code.
know sometimes you be like when you're doing a string, it's just easy to write bar, not having to think about what the type is because you know it in the string. Well, I find that crazy. I, I find that the one thing about JavaScript that I absolutely can't stand. Not strongly typing all that. Well, you know, C sharp is in closely typing. When you pass the string.